you're having trouble playing your acoustic guitar, maybe it's just uncomfortable to play, you might be getting string buzz, or your strings may be obviously too far away from the fretboard, making it uncomfortable to play further down the neck, then I'm gonna show you the basic setup that anyone can do with basic tools to make it play a lot more comfortable. So the basic tools that you'll need to get on with this and set up your guitar properly will be a steel rule or a string action gauge. I'm using a steel rule because it's more widely accessible and I don't have a string action gauge. A sheet of sandpaper, I'm using 120 grit because a higher grit will shave down material off of our saddle and nut much quicker than this and I want to make small adjustments. And I'm using a capo for easiness for measuring the string height when I come to that. I will use a couple other tools as well along the way but those aren't necessary and it's just tools I'm using to make my life easier. When setting up an acoustic guitar, we want to set up the guitar in a specific order to make sure we do it correctly and we don't throw any of our previous work out. The first thing you want to do is make sure you tune the guitar. The guitar always needs to be in the correct tuning that you use the whole time so our measurements are correct. After tuning, we're going to make a truss rod adjustment or, a, or measure the, the neck relief so we know what adjustment we need to make to the truss rod. And then after that, we're going to look at the string action, the height of the strings at the nut and at the 12th fret which is affected by the saddle. When we come to do the action you always start with the nut first and then go to the saddle. So first things first, tune the guitar. So now your guitar is in tune we can move on to measuring the neck relief and look at making a truss rod adjustment. When taking the measurements to check for neck relief, we're checking for one of two things. We're checking to see if the guitar neck has up bow, also known as relief, or back bow, also known as negative relief. Back bow is not something that we want as it's going to cause fret buzz. You're not going to be able to fret or play your guitar properly. And too much up bow will be a problem as your strings will be too far from the fretboard and you may actually fret your guitar out of tune and the intonation will be off. Instead what we're looking for is a slight amount of relief, a very slight amount of up bow and you can check this the following way. If you have a straight edge, I have one of these, which is a not straight edge which essentially eliminates the frets but you can use a straight edge on top of the frets. That's probably the easiest way to check for relief. You just put it on and you check for any kind of gap. So it's touching at both the last fret and it's touching at the first fret. And I've got a very, very small, about half a mil gap, which is perfect, which is exactly what I'm looking for. If you don't have a straight edge, what you would do is you would fret the first fret, fret the last fret, and then you would be measuring at the 12th fret for how much space there is between the string and the fretboard. Now to make this easier, we're going to put a capo on the first fret. And then we can fret and check. About half a millimeter to a quarter millimeter of gap is perfect and that will be indicated by a very slight bounce in the string as you tap. Do the same for all strings and make sure the gap is consistent. So now we've measured the neck for relief, we can choose which adjustment that we need to make to the truss rod. My guitar was perfect, I had about a half a millimetre to a quarter millimetres gap between the fret and the string at the 12th fret using the method shown. If however your strings were touching the frets and there was no gap then you likely have back bow and you need to loosen the truss rod to allow for more relief and if there was too much of a gap, if there was too much of a bounce between the fret and the strings using the method that I've shown then you need to tighten the truss rod to straighten the neck out a little bit more to bring it back to a playable standard. So firstly, you need to locate where you can access your truss rod. This is usually either found at the headstock or through the sound hole just at the end of the fretboard. 
Mine is at the end of the fretboard. Usually you'd need about a four or five mil Allen key, or you can get a truss rod wrench to use to adjust it. To add relief or up bow, you need to turn your Allen key to the left, lefty loosey, loosening the truss rod. And to straighten the neck out, because you have too much relief, you need to turn to the right, righty tighty, lefty. When you're making the adjustments to the truss rod, just make very, very small adjustments. You want about to do, do about an eighth of a turn in each direction and then recheck as too much of a turn will make too much of a difference and you'll lose where you're at. So just very small, minor incremental changes. Double check until you're exactly where you want to be. The next step in the setup is addressing the action or the string height. This can be done at both the nut and the saddle of the guitar, but we should always start with the nut to make sure that our measurements are correct and we don't throw anything out. So to check the action at the nut, what you need to do is you need to fret the third fret of each string. And with the third fret pushed down, you need to check the gap between the first fret and the string. Similarly to what we did last, you want to have about a half a mil to a quarter mil of distance between the fret and the string. Now you can check this with your string action gauge or your ruler, or you can just check it the same way we did before. Now if there's too much of a gap, if the action is too high, you have two options that you can take. You can either file down your nut slots, but you do need to have the correct nut slot files, which can be expensive, and you have to have the correct ones for each string. Or, on the other hand, you can take your nut off. Using your sandpaper on a flat surface, you can take off that small amount of material from the bottom of the nut to bring it down to the desired height. Again, make sure that you know how much you want to take off and you only take off small amounts and check your progress to make sure you don't take off too much. If on the other hand, there's no gap and your action is too low at the nut, you can always take a little piece of paper or card and pack out the bottom of the nut to bring it up slightly as much as you need until it's perfect. So once you've finished adjusting the action at the nut and that's perfect, we can move on to adjusting the action by changing the height of the saddle. We make this measurement down at the 12th fret. So without pressing down any of your strings, you just wanna take your steel rule at the 12th fret and you want to measure the gap between the first string and the fret and the, the sixth string, the high E and the low E. About 1.5 millimeter gap at the high E is perfect, and about two to 2.5 millimeter at the low E is perfect. Now on my guitar, I'm at about two and a quarter mil at the high E and about three mil at the low E, so I could do with bringing off about half a millimeter. So the next step would be to take the strings off and to sand down the saddle. And it's the same process as it were for the nut. We need to take our sandpaper on a flat surface and just sand it down until we're happy with our progress. Just make sure that you make small changes and check your progress. Measure your saddle first to make sure you take off the correct amount. So when you're happy with your bridge and you've shaved enough off, before putting the strings back on and double checking our work, it'd be worth giving the fretboard a little clean and adding some oil. Now I've restrung my guitar recently and have done both, so I'm not going to do so in this video because adding too much oil is not good, but you just need to apply some cleaner to a nice cloth, really clean up the fretboard, and then the same for the oil, apply a small amount to a cloth and just go over the fretboard, making sure that you leave no dry spots. Now once that's done, we can put our bridge back in place, we can restring the guitar, and then we can tune the guitar and double check our progress and see how we've done. We need to double check the 12th fret like we did before, make sure that our distances are correct, and just give the guitar a good play and make sure it plays how you'd like it to play. Okay, so now we come to the end of the video. We've got the guitar set up how we'd like it. We've checked neck relief and we've adjusted the truss rod, so that's perfect. We've adjusted the string action from the nut and the saddle and rechecked, and this is exactly where I want it to be and it plays much easier. And we have restored the fretboard and put some oil on there to make it much more playable. And we have a fully set up guitar. The last thing to do is just to double check that it plays okay both down at the nut and at the top, so we can just do some normal cowboy chords. Some bar chords. And then up at the 
top as well. And make sure everything plays all right. And it seems to play fine. Make sure you've got no string buzz. And then there you are, and when you're happy with it and there's no string buzz and everything feels okay and it's much more comfortable, you have a fully set up acoustic guitar. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care.